نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اليوم 13 من شهر صفر 1443 الموافق ل 20 ل 20 من شهر سبتمبر 2021 نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه ويغفر لنا الزلات ويغفر للمؤلف ويرفع درجته في العليين So today إن شاء الله we will be continuing from where we stopped last, uh, last week And uh, if you remember we stopped at the saying of the مؤلف وقد شبه الله أهل الجهل والبغي بالحمر تارة وبالكلب تارة وبالأنعام تارة He said, if you look into the Quran, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing. He describes, he equates the uh, people of ignorance. People of ignorance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compare them with uh, people of ignorance and, and baghi. Baghi is a dhul, oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compare them with, with, uh, with al-humr, yani, uh, donkeys. Yeah, that's يَذْرَبُ بِهِ الْمَثَلْ فِي الْبَلَادَةِ وَالْجَهْلِ You know, people in, in almost every nation, the, the, one of the examples they have to show that somebody is really dumb and doesn't understand things and ignorant, they use donkey. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe and equate some people uh, with donkeys. وَبِالْكَلْبِ يعني Like, uh, like the, 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 the Jew, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, described them with donkeys. Al-Himari yahmilu asfara. And some uh, people also, because of some mad, uh, manners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equates them with donkeys, the way they speak. And you have a lot of similarities in this life. You know, every single thing mentioned by Ibn Qayyim in this uh, place, if you look carefully, around you, you will find a lot of similarities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us not to find this example being applicable on, on us. And some people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equate them with kilab. <coughs> like dogs. <coughs> like that uh, person that I have mentioned Uh, uh, the other day, Bal'am uh, ibn Ba'ura. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, آتيناه آتينا فانسلخ منها فأتبعه الشيطان فكان من الغاوين. وتقوى هذه المشابهة باطنا حتى تظهر في السورة الظاهرة ظهورا خفيا. Subhanallah. Ibn Qayyim says sometimes this mushabaha equation, you know, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them similar to those things, Would be very strong, very, very, very strong spiritually because these are things which are supposed to be hidden. But sometimes they will be very strong in a way they cannot be hidden anymore. They will start appearing slowly, 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 slowly. You know, in the way uh, those people of Firaza can see what this person is suffering from. وَتَظْهَرُ فِي الْأَعْمَالِ ظُهُورًا So that's when it is hidden. You know, it, it, uh, I'm sorry, when it is hidden, it started appearing gradually. So the smart people, the people of consciousness, the righteous people, you know, the scholars, you know, uh, the people who are concerned with the terbiya and also with the nature of humankind, they can understand that this person is not at ease. This person is not okay. قال وتظهر في الأعمال ظهورا يراه كل أحد حتى يراه كل أحد ولا يزال يقوى حتى تستشنع الصورة. So and sometimes this thing will appear in the actions and the activities of that person. In a way, people can see everything. Subhanallah. People can see what this person is all about. فَتَنْقَلِبُ لَهُ الصُّورَةُ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ 
قال فتنقلب له الصورة بإذن الله and then that surah the nature will be dominating that person you know so the person will be converted into that thing <coughs> in his action and then when it is uh, the actions are you know similar to those ones قال تشتشنا الصورة in the way people will find it so disgusting فتنقلب له الصورة بإذن الله and sometimes, not only that, the nature will change completely. That's to be The nature will change completely to that thing which Allah SWT is equating him to. Subhanallah. And this happened, you know, Quran narrated for us uh, issues like that. And the Prophet warned some people from doing certain activities which might lead them to be in this situation whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their image to another kind. Like raising up the head when a person is praying. The Prophet sallallahu said they should be very careful or else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn their faces into the face of donkey. You know the masq where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converted and changed the nature of a person to something else. That's the complete conversion. And it happens to the Jew. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converted them into pigs, into uh, monkeys. قَالَ فَيُقَلِّبُ اللَّهُ الصُّورَةَ الظَّاهِرَةَ عَلَى صُورَةِ ذَاكَ الْحَيْوَانِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the nature and the image of that person to the image of that animal. SubhanAllah, at first, the attitudes, the manners, you know, the behavior will be like that animal. And then later on, when it is too strong, Allah SWT will let that which is hidden dominate the physical image. And a person will convert physically in the eyes of whoever looks at him as that animal. It's like the way Allah SWT did with the Yahud and they are alike. وَيَفْعَلُ بِقَوْمٍ مِّنْ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ يَمْسَخُهُمْ قِرَدَةً وَخَنَزِيرًا Allah SWT is going to do the same thing with a people from this Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They will be converted into pigs, وَخَنَزِيرًا You know, into uh, monkeys and pigs. So it happens in the previous nation. And it is going to happen in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَلِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ it did not happen yet. You know, all of those things that you see uh, from the internet, you know, most likely these are all filthy things. People have nothing to joke with except these things, which are supposed to be realistic. You know, creating a lie and attributing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so bad. You know, sometimes when people do, one create images and say that, yeah, this person is doing this and that, and then Allah converted him to this and that. You know, only when that is true, or else a person will be in really a dangerous situation because this is a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah did not do that. But it will actually and definitely happen in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the way it happens in the past. Why is it going to happen and when is it going to happen? Wallahu alam. It did not happen yet in the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned it. But it will happen. In Sayyid Bukhari in Hadith Hisham bin Ammar, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said يَسْتَحِلُّ أُنَاسٌ مِّنْ أُمَّةِ الْحِرَى وَالْحَرِيرِ وَالْخَمْرُ وَالْمَعَازِ He said the people will be validating, will be legalizing, making halal four things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made haram. Number one, al-hira. Al-hira is zina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it halal, but it's going to be, uh, I'm sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it haram, but it's going to be legalized by, by some people. They will make it halal. You know, subhanAllah. Nowadays, you know, it comes to the Muslim and, uh, communities. You know. Nowadays, this zina comes to the Muslim communities. Allah, we have to be very careful. And I'm saying this to you, you know, viewing issues that I come across, you know, where you understand exactly the reason why we have to take precautions a lot. 
we have to take precaution a lot. That door is enough for it, for it to be open again. That's a free relationship that the children, our children are having, male and female, and we close our eyes, we think this is freedom. Wallahi, it is not. It is not. Many, many, many things are taking place in this life, you know, in the Muslim communities, and the zina is happening among the children, you know, subhanAllah. And that is nothing to be done because we already opened the door. We think it is okay. In our education system, it is like that. Which is not supposed to be like that. We think it's okay. They're cooperating. They're understanding each other. But at the end of the day, you don't under, you, I mean, you don't understand how much you're opening the door for the shaitan to come and influence and do, uh, put in them that, you know, subhanAllah, evil attitude of going against the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of having illegal relationship. Come across a lot. There is nothing left except the Ummah should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep the barrier in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it. No. Keep the barrier in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it. Or else we shouldn't complain. We shouldn't complain. One of the most destructive diseases that is affecting the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already warned us. He says, La taqarabu zina, innahu kana fahishatan wa sa'a sabila. So some people will legalize it because when you legalize the way you're going to end up, you know, you know, uh, you legalize the way, you know, that leads to it. At the end of the day, if a person is not careful, he will end up doing the real action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to the truth and protect us and our families. But we really have to be very careful and pay attention on this matter properly. So that's number one, they will make halal. Al-Hira, Wal-Harira, Wal-Khamra, Wal-Ma'azif. They will make Al-Hira halal. That's the, the Farj, the Zina. Wal-Harir, and the wearing of the silk. You know, they will make it halal. Wal-Khamra, and the drinking of the wine. They will make it halal. These things are going to be rampant. Wal-Ma'azif, and the use of the musical instruments with no exception, except the duf that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam legalized to be used by the sisters when there is, when there is wedding. Open your ears and see where does this music, I mean, didn't reach, you know, where else it doesn't reach. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam salamu wa afiyah, and it kills the heart, it destroys the heart, you know, it makes it so weak, and it occupies the place in the ways uh, in the way, you know, the Quran and the beneficial things will find it very difficult to exist simultaneously in the heart as long as that disease is there. So when these four things are rampant, you know, and people are using them excessively, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the last part of this hadith, he says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala yamsakhu akharina qiradata wal khalasir. Some of these people, Allah will destroy them. Some of them, Allah SWT will convert them into pigs and monkeys because of that attitude. So I guess the dars and the lesson is up to us to think. Are we still having doubt in the impermissibility of these things? Because until today, the debate remains, especially when it comes to the last one mentioned by the Prophet Wasallam. You're still having some people who are having doubt. You're still having some people who don't have that strong fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them, you know, putting the ummah on the same side. In the name of the scholarship, they will legalize it for the people. In the way, you know, subhanAllah, you will be thinking of what exactly are they basing this uh, fatwa on, except following the desire. But in fact, you find some of them also, they themselves also, they will tell you the interest in some of these, uh, these things. So that's how shaitan is dominating the heart in the way it is reflecting in the, in the action. And also he's transferring this to the, the ummah. That's why it's so important to have a scholar who is good and upon the right path. Otherwise, the community is going to get into trouble. They have their trust in him. But he will be leading them in the wrong in the wrong way. Qala ibn al-Qayyim, fa subhanallah, kam min qalbin mankusin wa sahibuhu la yashur. Wa kam min qalbin mamsukhin wa sahibuhu wa qalbin maksufin 
وكم من مفتون بثناء الناس عليه ومغرور بستر الله عليه ومستدرج بنام الله عليه please pay attention to this uh, statement of ibn al-qayyim you know it's really 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 important and, and sensitive everyone needs to know this wallahi every one of us needs to know this you know how many times you find hearts that are lost for to turn it upside down can amruhu furuta you know almost every time this person is messy his affairs are always upside down are in the wrong way but unfortunately he thinks he is in the right way he thinks he is in the right way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul hal unabbiukum bil akhsarina a'mala alladhina dalla sa'yuhu fil hayat ad-dunya wa hum yahsabun annahum yuhsinuna sun'a don't you want me to tell you about the real losers in terms of action their actions are all astray you know all of their deeds are straight. But at the same time, they thought they are doing the correct thing. So Ibn Qayyim is referring to issues like this. He said, how many times you have heard that Allah SWT turn it upside down? It cannot focus. It cannot make a right decision. But that person thinks that everything is okay. And the owner of this heart doesn't have a reflection. He doesn't even feel it. He does not even feel that the heart is really away from the right path. This is really dangerous. Wallahi nasa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiq wa salama. To be in the situation whereby your heart is gone completely, is dead. But you don't feel that. You think everything is fine. You think you're so smart, you know. We do have people like this, you know. Some of them no light in their faces. Some of them, you see them the way they talk, you can perceive that this person is gone, but he thinks he's right. Yeah. You know, saying this, you, I can remember, you know, a lot of examples that you also, you do have eyes to watch, and also you will understand what I'm talking about. And you have the qalb, the heart, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn into another image. And you have another one, maqsuf, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala buried it, you know, opened the, 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 the earth, you know, al khasf is to cause the person to sink under the ground. So this qalb, the heart, is covered completely. But unfortunately, the owner of this heart doesn't understand and doesn't feel it. And how many times you have somebody who is deceived, you know, who is deceived and tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the praise, you know, you know, deceived by the praises of the people. People always praise him. MashaAllah, this person is this and that. And he let that deceive him. You know, at the same time, they are praising, but this person's action is all yeah, nonsense, you know, but people are praising him. And this is exactly what is going on now. Somebody will come and talk, you know, rubbish sometimes. And you can see the way people are praising him. You know, I have never seen somebody like this, 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 this and that. But if you take what he said and weigh it with the religion of Allah SWT, it's useless. As the Prophet Allah already mentioned this. They will mention a person that will say, Ma aqala. You know, we never see a person who has aql like this. But if you look at this person as far as aql is concerned, you will not see that aql that people are talking about. But that tells you the nature of the people who are living at that at that time. And verily, we are living in some part of this, this moment. So you have many people who are deceived by the praise. People are praising him. So that is what is deceiving him. And nowadays, you can also convert it in the time of Ibn al-Qayyim. They usually don't look at this that much. But nowadays, how many people are following? How many people are listening? You know? So many people are gone. You know? Why? Because they cannot change. Why is that? Because they are afraid if they change, those 1 million, 2 million people who are following him, they might not follow him anymore. He doesn't want to lose that. He doesn't want to lose that. So rather he prefer, uh, prefer 
you know, to go against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly or indirectly to maintain that fame and the crowd. Always deceiving himself with the comment that people are making about, about them. And who are the commentators? Normal people, you know, layman in society. Imagine a common person is the one who will tell us that this person is really a scholar. SubhanAllah, how does he know? A person can narrate stories and rubbish and attribute them to Sharia and then come. And the way he put them, because he has the language, you know, you find the ignorance. You know, the ignorant, you know, will be thinking that he is really, really excellent in his scholarship. As I have heard somebody who was describing one of them, may Allah guide him and the other one, is saying that this is beyond the scholars, you know. And subhanAllah, with a normal uh, scholarship and the, the, the study that you have, you sit down, if you have you know, the common sense in the hadith and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you will understand the deviation that takes place from time to time in the lectures of this person who is described as a great scholar or even greater than the normal scholars. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salamu ta'ala hafiyya. So we have to be smart, we have to be smart. Faqiru shay'i la How do I judge you? How do I you know, evaluate what you're doing if I don't even know the nature of what you're doing. How do I do the evaluation? How do I do the evaluation? I did not study medicine. You know, you bring a medical doctor, I'm the one who <laughs> evaluates him. You know, talking about Sharia and his manners and attitude, yeah, this one everyone can do, but you're talking about the, 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 the science of medicine itself and you bring him to me. What do I do? You know? How do I evaluate him? But we are living in this contemporary era whereby titles, as long as I do have this title, then I'm qualified to do everything I'm qualified to say, everything I'm qualified to talk. You know, exactly like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, اِتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ رُؤُوسَ جُحَالَ People are going to end up taking, you know, leaders and guiders, you know, the people who are ignorant. They will take people of ignorant as the scholars. And they will be asking them questions about their, their lives. قَالَ وَكَمْ مِنْ مَفْتُونٍ بِثَنَاءِ النَّاسِ عَلَيْهِ وَمَغْرُورٍ بِسِتْرِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ You have some who are deceived by the concealment. Allah SWT conceal his affairs. He is deceived by this, you know. Uh, everything is okay because Allah did not expose his secret. This is really rude and a very dangerous moment and a very dangerous situation uh, and a position a person to be in. Almost Ted the Rajin. So that's, 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 that's the result because when you are going in the wrong direction, you're not following precisely what Allah SWT asks you to do. Allah SWT is doing istidraj for you. When you see a person receiving the ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and this person is still committing the sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَعْلَمْ إِنَّمَا ذَلِكَ استدراج. istidraj is to give a person respite that is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixed for that person to be taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only when that time arrived then the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come so before then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him so many things we call them istidraj Allah SWT has given him respite until the time he reached the place where Allah SWT plan, plan and prescribed that he is going to be taken, then Allah SWT will get him. That's where Allah SWT says, uh, uh, the, the, he says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِمَنْ خَافَ عَذَابَ الْآخِرَةَ ذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ مَجْمُعٌ لَهُ النَّاسُ وَذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ مَشْهُودٌ وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ Yeah, that's the ayah I'm looking for. وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَ إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is actually the way it happens when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get a city after they oppress themselves. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them respite and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get them at the time He prescribed for, for them. إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ As He said in Surah 2, الْأَنْعَامِ فَقُطِعَ دَابِرَ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hatta afu wa qalu qad masa'aba an adhara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a lot until the time they think that everything is fine, everything is okay, life is so smooth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will visit them, will cut them from the root. Allah says, فَقُطِعَ الدَّابِرُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا You know, the back of those people, you know, will be cut off. That means the last part of them will be cut up. They will not reproduce again. All of those people, you know, that we have heard about uh, 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 them in the Quran, where are they now? They're gone. Allah wants to cut them from the root. They don't produce anyone anymore. Allah says, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. SubhanAllah. Because when you purify the earth with those type of people, you're really doing the good job for the community. So Allah SWT says, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The evil is gone. You know. He says, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When he destroyed the people of Nuh, alayhi salam, and he asked Nuh and the Safina, you know, to get down from the sea, was towed ala al judi you know. Look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, uh, talked to Nuh. He says, Uhbit bi salamin minna wa barakatin alayka wa ala umamin mimman ma'ak wa umamun sanu matti'uhum thumma yamassuhum minna adhabun alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to come down in peace. Because after that, you know, destruction, the whole the noun is purified from these type of people, you know. So evil is taken away from, from the earth. Okay. So a person should be very careful because sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might be giving you respite, but unfortunately you don't understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will visit that person with a punishment at the end of the day. قَالَ وَكُلُّ هَذِهِ عُقُوبَاتٌ وَإِهَانَاتٌ يَظُنُّ الْجَاهِلُ أَنَّهَا كَرَامَةٌ Ibn Qayyim says all of these things are عُقُوبَات uh, you know, and disrespect, punishment and disrespect and humiliation but unfortunately the ignorance the ignorance they always think that these are karamat karamat is those uh, strange things that are happening and taking place at the hand of the righteous people you know they are not prophets, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes let them see uh, strange things taking place at their hand. He makes dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. You know, he walk on the water, he get into the fire, he, he doesn't get burned, you know. And uh, some of them, their animals is bring, uh, brought back to them. All of these things are confirmed to be, you know, happening in the life of some other people. The good ones, they don't even pay attention to them because they know if they pay attention to them, it might turn into fitna, you know, against them. So there are some people who have this type of humiliation in their hand, but they think this is, this is karama. So a person should be very careful. Always, always, you know, monitor your activity. Relate the ni'mah that Allah SWT has given you with your attitude and manners. You see the ni'mah is coming, ni'mah is coming, and you are still committing sin. You don't want to repent, and Allah SWT is still granting you the blessing. Allah blessing you, granting you the ni'mah, ni'mah, ni'mah. And through that which you're doing, Allah SWT is given. You know, that's what we call istidraj. It is a punishment. It is a, the way Allah SWT to take that person to be so negligent until the time the punishment comes, when the person never expects a punishment to come. Because to be punished from an angle that you never expect punishment is harder than you being punished or anyone being punished at the time they expect the punishment to come. Although the punishment from Allah SWT cannot be handled by anyone, but still if a punishment from Allah is coming from the angle where the person never expected it is harsher in terms of impact than the punishment that comes after a person knows that the punishment is coming. قَالَ وَمِنْهَا مَكْرُ اللَّهِ بِالْمَاكِرِ وَمُخَادِعَتُهُ لِلْمُخَادِعِ وَاسْتِهْزَاؤُهُ بِالْمُسْتَهْزِئِ these are also different types of punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on and those people sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yamkuru Allah. They plan, they plot against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also plan against them. Do the makar, this is sifa min sifatullah azza wa jal. We don't extract from it a name but it is a sifa min sifatullah azza wa jal. And usually when you see this sifa being mentioned, it is mentioned lil muqabala. When somebody did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do 
I mean, something which is stronger than what they do it. The one that comes from Allah SWT is praiseworthy. Because even naturally, when somebody plot against you, when you plot back against him, yours is praiseworthy. You know, praiseworthy. You know, yours is is is, is good. It's okay because you are replying an evil. You know. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa imkuruna wa imkuru Allah, wa makaru makran, wa makarna makra, wa hum la yashgurun." فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ مَكْرِهِمْ أَنَّ دَمَّنَهُمْ وَقَوْمَهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ وَمَخَادَعَتُهُ لِلْمُخَادَعِ And also, they think they are deceiving Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And Allah SWT will take them also in the same way. SubhanAllah. And it happens even on the day of judgment. A person will think that he is going to pass. You know, look at those people who are betraying the amana. They don't uh, take the trust in the way it should be taken. The Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تُمَثَّلُ لَهُ أَمَانَتُهُ كَهِئَتِهَا يَوْمَ دُفِعَتِ إِلَيْهِ فَيَرَاهَا فَيَعْرِفُهَا فَيَحْمِلَهَا عَلَىٰ عَتِقِهِ You know, and the person will come on the day of judgment, Allah SWT will bring him the amana that was given to him. Money, cow, car, house, uh, and, 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 and guardianship, or whatever amana was uh, give, being given to him, the amana will come. In the same way it was given to him. When he sees it, he will remember that. So he will take it and put it on his shoulder. And he will be going, trying to cross the Sirat. And you can see this person will be so happy that he is passing. حَتَّى إِذَا ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ زَلَّتْ عَنْ مَنْ قِبَيْهِ فَيَهْوِ فِي آثَارِهَا أَبَدَ الْأَبِدِينَ Until the time he started thinking that خلاص, he passed, he crossed the Sirat. This amana will, I mean, spill from uh, his shoulder, you know, slips from his shoulder and fall down. And then he follows it inside the hell. Abd al Abidin. So you can see Allah SWT let him reach this situation, but then Allah SWT get him at the end of the day. This happens on the day of judgment, and this is the worst. You know, this is the worst because if it happens in this life, it might be the reason why a person repents and comes back to Allah SWT. But on the day of judgment, how can he reflect and how can he change? How can he come back to Allah SWT? How can he fix it? There is no way for him to fix anything. So there are some people because of their evil attitude, Allah SWT deal with them in this life, in this way. And there are some people also, Allah SWT will make mockery on them in the same way they are making mockery on the believers. Uh, sometimes Allah SWT will deviate the heart from the right path. It will never see it. Waliyadu billah. وَمِنْهَا نَكْسُ الْقَلْبِ حَتَّى يَرَى الْبَاطِلَ حَقَّهَا أعوذ بالله Sometimes Allah SWT because of the sins Allah can turn the, the heart upside down in the way it will see the, the falsehood as the truth وَالْحَقَّ بَاطِلَ It will see the truth as a falsehood exactly like our time you have many who qualifies this statement the batil is the haq and the truth is the batil. You see a person attributing himself to the Muslims, you know, affiliating himself to the scholarship, but you will see how much they are defending the batil. You know, subhanAllah. You know, you, you hear some of some of the scholars in their statement, you will be surprised, you know. And good scholars, good scholars sometimes, but you know, test in this life is everywhere. That's why as a scholar, as a, lay, as a scholar, as a layman in society, as a student of knowledge, you have to learn this attitude. If you are not an expert in something, you should keep quiet. It is always better for you. Things which are doubtful, you know, things which becomes fitna, the best approach concerning those matters is to say, La Adri, I don't know. Because whatever you're going to say concerning this matter, it might be wrong at the end of the day. As a smart person, you should always learn this principle of being silent when you are not sure. When you are not sure. But you find some scholars based on the hearsay, somebody said this, somebody said that, they take and they build their opinion upon one side which they don't have concrete information concerning this matter and they spread it in, in the Ummah. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yahdiyana jamiyan. So sometimes batil will be seen as the truth and truth will be seen as batil. Wal ma'roof munkar. And the ma'roof will be seen as the munkar. You know, ma'roof is a righteous deed and a righteous thing. People will see it as a munkar. Wal munkaru ma'roofan. And people will see the munkar as, as ma'roof. SubhanAllah. Also, I guess you all know uh, that yes, this one has application in, in our contemporary time. Sometimes the way you behave, people will see you so strange, you know, you are behaving strangely. And people who are going against the law of Allah SWT will be accommodated and accepted. And the righteous people are stranger, are the one who should fix their attitude and their manners and come and merge themselves to those, to those ones. And you have some people who are causing destruction on the earth, but unfortunately they think they are fixing things. And he blocks people from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but unfortunately he thinks he is actually inviting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he buys falsehood with guidance. With guidance, you know, he will take guidance and Iman and Islam and buy Dalala and Kufr with it. Look at some of uh, those people on top, you know, SubhanAllah. The same way Ibn Qayyim is talking about, the same way they decided to lead the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to. Ummah is in good shape. But unfortunately, they are led by who? The losers. Who wants to bring the so-called good life and change the right path, you know, with the evil one. And they think it's okay. They call that wasatiyah, you know, ad din al-wasat, you know, subhanAllah. Kalima tu haqqin urida biha batil. Because the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is always wasat, the religion of wasatiyah. But what is wasatiyah? Wasatiya is not according to the way people are understanding nowadays, whereby wasatiya means to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, nowadays wasatiya means to accept kufr and to accept iman. That's why nowadays you have the debate is still ongoing, you know. Is it even allow, allowed for you to call kufar kufar? You take it as disrespect, you are not being moderate. Moderation is good, you know. Moderation is supposed to be accommodated, you know. You can't call them kufar. This established principle that Allah SWT put in the Quran, nowadays we started trying to delete them. We started trying to delete them under the name of the so-called wasatiya. You accept kufr, you know, you have in some countries also without mentioning the name, but I guess many of you come across uh, this, whereby uh, they're trying to merge all of the religion and to have, I guess I heard about something called Bayt al-Ibrahimiya, Bayt al-Ibrahimiya, whereby you have a, 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 a place, you know, uh, where you have the masjid, you know, a place which has, which is, uh, there is a masjid, there is a temple, there is a synagogue, there is, I don't know what madrish, uh, other things they put inside, you know, uh, they're all brothers as they call themselves, they're all brothers, you know. So that's Aqidah of Wala Rubra should be firmly established in our heart. Allah SWT commanded us to be kind to the non-Muslims and to invite them to Islam. But he did not say we should merge ourselves to them. He says, Lakum dinukum waliyadeen. Nowadays, you know, you see those ones, they are calling upon, you know, uh, the prohibition of calling them kuffar or thinking that somebody who dies not in Islam will be going to, to hell. I heard recently somebody was sharing with me, uh, somebody who called himself scholar or mufti, you know, but he's saying that Muslims shouldn't think that they are correct, you know. And the rest are wrong, you know. Muslims should not think, you know, in the way he says wrong, to think that others, other people are going to hell. Who said that? You know, subhanAllah, he's given a very silly interpretation of the religion of Allah SWT, which includes everyone. I was in, in a place also where uh, uh, somebody, you know, came and told us, yes, that there is no uh, difference between uh, Muslims and others. They are all Muslim because Islam means uh, 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 peace and to live in a state of peace with others. And you cannot say that this person is going to hell, even if he dies in Kufr. How do you know? How do you know? 
Because according to them, there are many of them who are even better than the Muslims. So how is it possible that this Muslim goes to paradise and he wasn't good that much, but this kafir will go to hell just because he doesn't agree with Allah's martyr to be worshipped alone? So you have all of these, these type of attitudes and mentalities in the Muslim community that we really have to be very careful. And it is always showing us the necessity of selection, you know, selecting the scholars, don't just take knowledge randomly. Be very selective and make sure that you know exactly whom are you taking knowledge from. And he believes that he is upon the truth and the right path. And he follows his desire, but at the same time, he claims that he is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala wa kullu hadhihi uqubatu al-dhunubi al-jariyat al-qalb. He said, all of these are punishments, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plays on the sins, which are uh, punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plays on the heart because of the sins a person is committing. قَالَ وَمِنْهَا حِجَابُ الْقَلْبِ عَنِ الرَّبِّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْحِجَابُ الْأَكْبَرُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى كَلَّا بَرَّانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ uh, It's one of these punishments is the hijab that Allah SWT put a barrier between him and the heart. Well, hijab al akbar so the, uh, in this dunya there will be a barrier between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the heart. And subhanallah, tell me how is it possible for somebody to be guided, you know, to be in a, a very uh, peaceful life if the link and the connection between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gone. Well, hijab al akbar and the greatest hijab is the one that will take place on the day of judgment. Allah says, Kalla barran ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun kalla innahum ar rabbihim yawma idhilla mahjubun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is a ran or rain ala qulubihim. Because of their sins and their evil attitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that black dot which covers their hearts so they couldn't see the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the day of judgment, they will be covered and deprived from seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنَعَتْهُمُ الذُّنُوبُ أَنْ يَقْطَعُوا الْمَسَافَةَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ So the, heart, the, the sins deprive them, for, for, I mean, to, to, to complete that distance, you know, to complete the journey, you know, between them and the heart, you know, فَيَسْلُوا بِهَا فَيَرَوْا مَا يَسْلُحُهَا وَيَزَكِّهَا so it cuts them off that journey of the heart which will take the heart to the best position the sins stop these people from reaching the situation whereby they can be able to see that which will fix them they can be able to see that which will purify purify their hearts they can be able to differentiate between that which which is benefiting them and that which is harming them so they can be able to see that, but unfortunately, they are supposed to reach that position in order to have this consciousness, but the sins deprive them from, from reaching this, this situation and position. And the journey, the peaceful journey they are supposed to be having towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also is, is cut off because of the sins. So if they manage to succeed in that journey, they will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will attain the success in this life. And they will be very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the ultimate success in the life of a believer. You know, you have a you know, your eyes will be satisfied, you know, your, 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 your nafs, you know, your soul will be, will be excellent, you know, will be in a state of pleasure, you know, when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this life also is going to be reflected, you know. You have a good life in this life, and on the Day of Judgment, you have the most excellent life. You know, when you live in Islam, you live in Islam, you know, a good life in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, that, you know, somehow the kind of life you're going to be receiving in the here of death is going to be reflected here. You have the peace of mind. You'll enjoy that peace and tranquility of the heart. He says, Subhanallah, 
is that not only the sins used to be hijab, the barrier between them and their hearts, and also used to be the barrier between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created them and the one who provided them with all types of masalih. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiq wa sadad, innahu bi kulli jameel and kafeel. Abraham, let's stop uh, here insha'Allah. And uh, in the Ta'ala, next class, uh, I will compensate you, insha'Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Ameen wa iyaakum. is Mubarak or is blessed due to his experience. For example, it is said that Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas had an arrow which he claimed was Mubarak and he used to take it with him to several battles. Mm -hmm. Yes, if a person sees that, yes, he maintained the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly and he follows the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa precisely in the way he is commanded, and he tries his best to maintain his ikhlas. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in his wealth, you know, in his life, in his children, in his family. Yeah, that's a sign of rida, bi'idhinillah azza wa jal. But uh, usually the righteous people, they don't get deceived by this. They try to keep it for themselves and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it better than the way they see. Yeah, this is how a person should do. You shouldn't advertise that, you know, and uh, come and tell everyone that, yes, I am this and that. He might be disturbed, you know, it might be fitna for him. Yes, the barakah exists and a person can sense it and can see it and it is true. Yes, that this is barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, something that is supposed not to be enough, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it enough. He was afraid of something, you know, not to suffice him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it sufficient. Yeah, so he should be so happy and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that should lead him to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase his righteousness and to be so, 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 so good and so humble, you know. So then inshallah the barakah will be, will be perfected. But as I said, a person should be very careful. This type of things, if it is not necessary, they are not supposed to be shared by, uh, by him with, with others. May Allah grant us tawfiq and uh, put barakah in our life and our wealth and our family. I mean, like, yeah, cool. like for example, some uh, like influencer, like a Sahabi or a Tabi who has an influence on the Ummah, if he tells about his position that it is blessed for the Ummah to learn and for them to take care of their positions and use them in the right way, is that okay? Ah, that's very okay, be the light Allah. Those one that you mentioned in the example, these are correct, 100%. There's a Barakah history talk about that and we have seen it. Those people, you know who they are, you know, they're beyond our imagination, you know, in terms of Iman and righteousness and humbleness. Those are all examples for us to strengthen our Iman and to have our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know that a Muslim shouldn't lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What you are belittling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in it, it will be more effective than the thing which uh, it is supposed to be actually effective. Mm. Uh, question by Sister Saada. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu Regarding what the Prophet said in the hadith about silk being permissible or impermissible for men, does that include what we see today of people being transgender, etc.? No, transgender is, uh, is, is, is absolutely and 100% uh, uh, prohibited. Transgender, these are the people who convert themselves to another gender, right? Yeah. yeah. This is absolutely haram, you know, because in Islam, even to imitate the opposite gender in their attitude and behavior is wrong. It's a curse. 
a person will be cursed when he does that. When a woman imitates a man and he's walking, you know, or the way the man's speaking, you know, and she uh, tries to look like them, she will be cursed by Allah. When the man does imitate the sisters, he will be cursed by Allah. And those people who are changing their gender and their creation to look like the other gender, this is absolutely going against the law of Allah and is part of the change in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it carries a curse. You know, this is a very, very, very big and major sin. A person has to quickly repent and come back to his consciousness and remove that disease from his heart and believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly and go and convert himself back into the way he was if that is possible. If it is not possible, then uh, he has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fix his affairs and uh, act according to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. Question by Sister Azmurita. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. When we do da'wah to non Muslims and if they were to ask, so are we going to hell? How exactly do we answer? Because all this while she has been answering them by saying that Allah knows best, He's the one who decides. However, Islam is the way of life. Is that a wrong answer? Is it? Yeah, very wrong answer. That's cheating. Uh, we have to tell them that, yes, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that they will be going to hell if they die in kufr. They have to know. They have to know so that they will make a decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk to them in that way. We have to keep that one. But that is always a good way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us and conveyed the message. So instead of tell, telling him, you are going to hell, <laughs> you should tell him or oh, her that uh, Islam is necessary. You know, Islam is necessary. The, 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 the fear is that if a person dies without accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will end up going to hell. That's why it's necessary. That's just say if a person, you know, dies without accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he died in that nature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that this person will be going to hell. And there's a message given to all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to recognize him as the only one to be worshipped and follow his sharia. So that's why it's very dangerous for a, a person to accept, to continue to live in this way. Uh, we can't cheat because it's a form of cheating if you don't tell him the truth and he's looking for the truth. If he told him, Allahu A'lam, you know, uh, 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 he will go and be thinking that, yes, there's still possibility for somebody to succeed even if he dies in a kufr. So that will be a deviation also in itself. But tell them in a good way that this is what Sharia says, that this person who died in kufr will be going to, will be going to hell. But we cannot look at a person and say to him, this person is going to hell because we don't know what kind of life is he going to ha have and how is he going to end his life? Is he going to accept Allah or not? Yeah, we put it in this way, you know, uh, but we don't tell him Allahu A'lam, you know. No, Allah SWT taught us the ma'al and the position of those people who rejected him. Uh, we have to look for a best way to convey the message to, so, to people who we think they will not understand. I remember one of the speakers, you know, he delivered a speech in the University of uh, Uzair, I guess Uzair is here, uh, Nottingham University. You know. And uh, people are very concerned because he talked about uh, uh, a non-Muslim ask him, where, does, where, where is a non-Muslim going if they die in Kufr? Where did they go? He said hell. And some of the, the I guess some of those, the, the, the inviters, they, they were annoyed with that answer. You know? So he called me, he was asking, you know, did I do wrong? I, I told him, no, there is nothing wrong. And subhanAllah, he said, I found, I found it interesting because the sister who was asking the question, she appreciated that. After, after the, the lecture, she came to him and she appreciated the, the, the answer. And she asked him some other questions. Because this is what we're supposed to be doing. Don't give people discount. Don't tell them the wrong thing. And then they are going to discover by themselves afterwards, they will feel cheated. Somebody knows, but he's not telling them the truth, you know. But you have to tell them the truth, but you look for the best way to explain to them. That's, that's how it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited all of those ayat to the kuffar in Makkah. <laughs> he recited to them, you know. They know the consequence and they understand. If they don't accept Islam, where exactly are they going to? That's, that's honesty and this is what we should be doing. 
So we just look for the best way to convey the message as we are commanded to do so by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, Abdul Rahman. Question by Khalid and Sheikh. If a Muhammad reaches puberty and their gender is determined through menstruation or the emission of semen, there is then no need to calculate their probabilities in Islamic inheritance, right? Uh, you're talking about Muhannath or Khuntha? As for what Khalid said, Muhammad. Ah, okay. Khuntha, yeah, because Muhannath is the wrong way. That person, those people who are uh, images in the sisters here. Yeah. And uh, Khuntha, uh, Khuntha is somebody who is created with uh, uh, two different uh, genders. You know. So if he reaches the, 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 the age of uh, puberty, uh, the question says? Yeah, it reaches, uh, they reach the age of puberty uh, and their gender is to remind thereafter to the mission of the uh, And the gender is to do? To the the gender is determined. Aha, uh -huh. we already know. If there is puberty, then you can get to know whether they are. Uh, no, there is there is khunsa is of uh, different types. Call it. That is the mushkil. Mushkil is the one that they reach the age of puberty, but we don't know who he is still. You know, these are the these are the one that it becomes a test for them. It becomes a test for them. So scholars have to think of how to deal with him. You find differences of opinion in terms of what kind of inheritance are we going to give him? Or give him the portion of this or the portion of that? Or we give him from here or from there? You know, mushkil, mushkil in everything, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salamu wa afiyah. Because those ones, they cannot even marry. Because if you let him marry, he, who is he going to marry? If he marry a sister, he might be a sister. He himself, uh, she's a sister, but doesn't know. If he married a, 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 a man, he might be a man, you know. So how does the person become mushkil? You know, this khuntha become mushkil when all of those signs that were uh, differentiating from the other gender are applicable on him, or they are missing all of them. You know, he grows beard. What, what would be the conclusion of drama? Male or female? Male. Yeah, male. But unfortunately, you know, he grows the beard, but then at the same time also he has the breast. Breast, breast like the, the sisters, you know. And you can see that, yes, there is milk in it. And now you will get confused. Uh, he uses the organ of uh, the man, you know, the male, karabakum Allah. You will conclude that he is a male. But at the same time also he uses the organ of the, the woman. You know, and in the same quantity, when he passes the urine, it comes all together in the same quantity. Why, do you, why would you take him? And also at the same time he passes the hide. What, what can he do with this? He has a beard, he has a mustache, he has breasts, he has the, the he does the height. You know? So these are the one that they call mushkil. As for the one, uh, we're talking about the one that is already exposed. Once he is exposed, then, uh, I mean, is it clear? We know the direction this person is heading to and what Allah SWT has chosen for him, either male or female. Let's say that the, the voice becomes so loudly, you know, not just that raqiq, like the sister's voice, you know, uh, naturally and also he has the, the beard he has the mustache and he doesn't uh, pass urine from the the organ of the the sisters he doesn't have hide you know then we consider him to be what to be a male that one is inactive and we can deactivate it also medically it will be deficiency then we can remove that one and keep the other one and we understand that this person is a male he can go on and marry marry a woman and the same goes to the inheritance, then he is very clear. That's why if you look at the inheritance of the Khuntha, it's quite complicated. But uh, the scholars did their best to explain how to deal with this person. And once it is this, uh, he is discovered, you know, after the discovery, then we take the, the portion which is detained and uh, uh, distributed back. Either we give him all, if he deserves his all, or we give him his hair, and the rest will return it back to the rest of the heirs who are, who are with him in that in that uh, case of inheritance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant you good and tawfiq and all of us and thank you very much uh, Khalid for helping my book inshallah to almost come out inshallah. <laughs> Thank you.
There's the last question. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you good and tawfiq in life. Inna huwi kulli jameel in kathir. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah wa tubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.